10,000 10, parallel executions. And you can even, even uh, do a complex ETL uh, 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 functions with a, in an organized way, you know, with a, with a STEM functions, which is, uh, in my opinion, amazing. And uh, so and zero so ETL or extra ETL? I mean, what's the, like, what's the final goal? Like, should we do ETLs or not? But depends. Maybe. I mean, depends. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They right. don't have. That's a completely mixed message, you know. Like. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is mixed message. I mean, uh, I. Do, it's it really depends. I mean, that's that's the only true answer. When you're yeah. gonna I'm do just ETL kidding. or not? Just kidding. But, but on that on that uh, on that event that that was that Daniel was running, there was like a really good discussion on like accessing data in a raw way directly in Athena. Or something. I don't care what it is. I don't care what kind of files that mm -hmm. they are. Just I'll take my data with a with a SQL query or something, and I'll just ingest data and process it in a way yeah. that that I, that I like. So yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So what's yeah. the worst? What's the worst like uh, release for you? Um, I I can't say really that it's uh that it's a worst release, but I would if I have to put everything in a in a uh, 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 worse release, then maybe I would say that I don't see any any value, at least right now in uh, in uh, uh, in those business applications that that came out. That's uh, supply uh, chain. I don't know. Maybe I don't understand them really, but uh, uh, I think it's it's not really in my area to say. In, it's not interesting interesting to me. But maybe it's uh, uh, it's how the AWS wants to move. They want to uh, they they announced that they're gonna uh, create some business applications in the future, and that's what they did. They created supply chain. I how, know. But how about this uh, uh, line of serverless uh, serverless uh, releases, like uh, open search serverless? That's my yeah. that's my favorite like favorite worst release uh so why why is it worst why is it worst? i mean it, it's just a, a symbol of this uh marketing approach to delivering the names the, the name serverless to, okay. to just any product needs to have a serverless version so like uh i don't know ec2 serverless one day will have something like that i assume i don't know what they're, they're going with uh, uh with this but uh they always they always okay. put uh, the, the the this this name serverless on on, on a product and uh, and what when when you when you deep dive uh, when you dive deep into that what's uh, what's inside it's still it's it's actually just kind of a uh, uh, the the way they deliver the price for you you know not 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 the really the, the product is still the it's still it's still hardware it's still you still need to allocate some resources or something you know it's not like a scaling up and down in, in all directions freely you know and uh, mm -hmm. uh, cannot scale to zero and uh, it can cause uh, several thousand euro dollars per month for uh, for a service if even if you don't use it complete mess you know like and then yeah. they now they put serverless to anything yeah um I don't uh, don't know if uh, it's uh, true. I didn't check it, but I heard that if you scale down Neptune to uh, uh, the Neptune is a is a uh, graph database. If you scale that to zero, it's gonna cost you three hundred dollars per month. It's oh, right. a Neptune serverless. These uh, uh -huh. these these emerging serverless offerings that aren't serverless is reminiscent to me of like how Azure would call serverless, like Azure mm -hmm. Synapse. Okay serverless where you still are managing resources but there's i guess less configuration or it's more managed um and i don't know if this is just eight of us trying to keep up uh or they're just i don't know what's going on here but i'm not i'm not particularly liking it so it's a buzzword i think it's a buzzword and they are adding that buzzword everywhere even when it's not in in actually in my opinion um uh aurora serverless uh v2 um and uh neptune and open search i think they're uh just uh they're having this uh managed auto scaling so basically they can scale but they're not really serverless in the sense of uh, uh pay as you go you know that, that pay as you go word seems like disappearing so you say it's 50 50 dollars per month for aurora serverless v2 is is too much for you you're not like a like a <laughs> guy 
<laughs> homeless guy like with like five dollars a month income or something i don't know like you're a rich developer well, you know you should pay for you should pay 50 dollars for your resources for a, yeah I mean. for serverless we too <laughs> yeah i, I would rather care. i would rather pay a few beers you know uh really yeah. i mean i mean sometimes people are complaining you know like that, uh, i would buy you a beer uh, <laughs> instead of uh, uh buying you a, a, an yeah. aurora serverless yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's fine for me if, if if products really scales up and down maybe not to zero okay but you know if if the minimum charge per pro for a product per year is about seven thousand dollars or something for open search or i mean i don't that i shouldn't we shouldn't call that serverless that's that's really uh some something heavy mm -hmm. yeah true so i i feel serverless even they are not they're not visible you know like i feel them with the that that dollar is so strong <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah so. yeah absolutely you feel them now now i'm yeah. i'm uh i have my account that i uh started paying and i have all bunch of stuff because i didn't pay it previously but i started paying it right now and uh wow it costs <laughs> it costs all the yeah. things that i was experimenting with and uh that i kept as a as a as a serverless you know you don't pay oh. them uh now i pay them and uh, kind of cost you know when it assembles i have to destroy them but i'm kind of lazy and and paying them but did you did, what, what what's your what's your guy opinion guy's opinion on on uh application composer like drawing drawing this uh i, I can talk about that well i mean huh? you know for those who are listening in uh app composer application composer used to be stackery and uh, prior to when Stackery was about to get um, uh, joined to the uh, hive, like the hive mind of AWS, I was making a Stackery course because I actually liked it. I liked it for the fact that it would produce extremely clean, in my opinion, clean cloud formation code. And so, you know, when you want to take the training wheels off and you didn't mind using SAM, then you could grow your app in a responsible way. Um, it's transitioned from Stackery onto Application Composer. Uh, like, not all the stuff is there. And for good reason, like, Stackery used to have, like, this proprietary uh, macro for making static website hosting. When I was using it prior to reInvent, because I wanted to evaluate it before I talked to App Composer, it was a bit buggy, or maybe it was when it was announced, after it was announced, I first touched it. But I just recently talked to the team, and I was, like, trying to point out all the things I had, and they were all cleaned up. So, you know, my my thing is like, can I build a full app in it, right? Can it solve all the most common business use cases, right? Like, can it do CloudFront, like CDN to to whatever and stuff like that? And I found that it is a bit limited still. So it's just, it's not exactly there. Uh, there's some UI improvements I think that could be uh, better. Like You better. need like a wide screen, like a really, you know, these giant screens now. It's maybe like 50 inches, not enough to draw a application well well you know the thing is like they used to have and maybe they'll bring it back but they had like a vs code extension and it was actually originally it was dark and i actually prefer the light over dark oh. but you know it, like the ui needs work like it's like the zoom is not as intuitive and stuff like that but the premise of dragging modules out having clean stuff and and getting stuff i think could work but uh i'd love to hear i'd love to hear other people talk about it mm. well i can share some thought about that um i mean um uh, it, it, it's obviously that everything is moving to the uh, no-code applications. Um, and th that's fine. Uh, I'm perfectly okay uh, with that. But, uh, you know, uh, from the perspective who, uh, from someone who understands Sam and who knows what is happening behind, you're perfectly fine. It really makes your life easier. But if you're somebody who is coming, um, you know, to to, let's say, uh creating application using application composer uh this thing creates the whole code in in uh, um, behind the scene that you are really not aware and you don't care to understand i mean you have to care mm -hmm. at some point i, I think oh sorry um uh, oh sorry yeah go ahead oh uh, uh, may i yeah um so you know low code no code i'd put this more of a low code thing i think the thing is is that you know you will have to touch your code very quickly using it because you have to implement lambdas. They're not writing that code for you. You have to do configuration. Yeah. Um, and when you use the project, like you have to sync it to a repo, not necessarily a repo, but, but locally. So I would say it doesn't 
doesn't make you sidestep coding or give you a false sense that you're getting started with something and you aren't digging deep. It really is people like, it's just like a visual aid tool on top of it. So I'm just not like, I'm just saying, if you're taking the perspective of like, it, it, it's an abstraction away, but I, I would like to say that I'm seeing eight of us trying to spin up a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, layers, like, you know, platform engineering, they're trying to build tools on top of their tools to make it easier. And I would really, really wish they'd just make the, the base tools easier to use. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Andrew, like, you know? uh, do, do you see that this is like kind of too late maybe? Because people are moving uh, uh, moving away from uh, cloud formation and in a way that they use uh, CDK, Terraform and stuff. So th this uh, uh, application composer is for, for, uh, for cloud formation. And uh, oh, we right, already yeah. have we already have some languages, let's call it that way, and uh, to to make these things easier, you know, like CDK constructs that we can reuse. You know, there is no way to to sh to display these abstractions in application yeah, composer. But, well, and I think the application composer is specifically for cloud. And so I guess it just comes down to opinion: is do you think cloud formation is a good foundation for? For building serverless applications, or is it niche for a very particular target market? I look at application composer for that niche or that specific yeah, yeah. type of stuff you want to use. CDK will never fit in here. Um, you know, I like the idea of doing uh, serverless CDK. Like SST had that, but I have some gripes with the company. Well, the, you know, they, they have they, they they actually talked about like uh, uh, providing these. Uh, abstractions wow. you know like a, a cdk stuff even because you know cdk is is it's actually yeah same thing as as, as cloud formation at the end you know but uh, uh 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 you need to express something with a drawing which mm -hmm. doesn't exist like a a, a, a really a high level uh, cdk construct that's we need to have a place in somewhere to keep this inf information about what's inside and how mm -hmm. the code looks like and then we should be able to reuse it you know like uh, uh it would just just people are moving away from cloud formation and uh, uh you know if you if you make a product with the cloud formation support only that's going to be like too late that's maybe five years late you know like uh, yeah i i guess it, again it comes to the opinion is like if you think cloud formation is on its last heels i guess the issue yeah. is like i still can't like I still, I still look at collaboration going. I like it because there's less moving parts. And every time I use CDK, I see constructs and out of date constructs. And I just, I have this lack of trust factor where there's like in between part. Um, and so uh, for me, the buy-in isn't there. And so I, like again, I might be a holdout, but I'm just saying like I still see it as valuable. And when I write serverless apps, I want them all to be in cloud formation. Um, not to say that I'm not using CDK mm -hmm. or or other things, but um maybe it's just maybe it's just like i'm i'm not as progressive about these parts sorry right. you're old yo andrew you're getting old you know like <laughs> using these technologies like like cobalt or something like who cares about confirmation anymore well i'm just trying to get my arduino kits working so <laughs> probably marine can add something about uh, how to write uh, infrastructure as code for the serverless applications marine you spoke at one of our last meetups about how you are doing that. So what would be your approach there? Well, uh, uh, OK, I, 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 I used uh, SAM for a quite some time. Uh, SAM is an extension of cloud formation. Uh, basically, it's just an abstraction for a serverless. Now I'm uh, uh, more with the Terraform. Uh, and I know that Terraform doesn't like uh, uh, um, <laughs> serverless a lot uh, so I had to do some changes and I created something that that is really helping me working with the serverless but for now it's it's all uh, still closed source uh, inside the company uh, but uh, yeah I mean uh, regarding that uh, I would say that uh, Sam is definitely something that uh, uh, I would use again, even though uh, CDK seems way better. Because uh, if someone is, if somebody comes from the development environment, he's uh, very familiar to to a coding approach. However, if somebody uh, used a, a, a SAM a lot, maybe I would you know start with the SAM uh, again if I if I'm considering CDK or SAM. But uh, you know, I would I would uh, uh, really you know measure those two yeah, things maybe maybe we're lo just losing time because you know you know the 
called Whisperer. It was released during the reinvent as a as a generally available. So yep. who cares? Now you just say what you want, and they will create that for you. Did you try it? Yes, yes. I was in the preview, and uh, it's 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 you know, <laughs> uh, AWS is trying to copy uh, uh, GitHub now. So okay. they released two two products that are copy of a GitHub. So the okay. uh, of products. First okay. one is called Whisper, and another one is called Code Catalyst. You know, mm. it's not the same. Uh, it's not fair to say that that's the same product. But in reality, you know, like okay, like even if you want to do some uh, uh, CI/CD in, uh, in in AWS, you can find so many good examples uh, with uh, with GitHub Actions and. Uh, that's just like too much. GitHub is everywhere, you know. So they need to do have some kind of a replacement for for that. So uh, I don't know, like why why Code Catalyst is not getting more uh, promotion from AWS or so. Of, of why they're not promote? They made the product, but they're now just kind of not really putting a bigger effort to to promote it. Uh, Can I say uh, but, some things uh, on this one here because I got yeah. uh, I got I have, I have Code Catalyst open right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. strong opinions about this one because, like, what I saw, as you said, it's like it's Azure DevOps, right? They're saying, let's have our let's have our um, our repo and our code and our tracking and our pipeline all in one place. In I in in theory, I like that idea, but again, I, I I look at it and go, why aren't they enriching their existing services? So, for instance, if you spin up, and this almost kind of reminds me of Code Stars, this obsession with platform engineering because their base services they refuse to fix them. And so, like you look at Code Catalyst, and they have some templates there that you can spin up. They have one like a serverless handler, and I'm doing a serverless handler like like thumbnails in my bootcamp. I'm not going to use the Code Catalyst one because I don't trust the template because I don't know the quality of it. There's a lot to dig into it. Um, the other issue is like you spin it up, and it creates a repo for you. You think it's a code commit repo? No, it's in Code Catalyst. So it's like, why aren't they? Why aren't they letting you use the code commit repo? You can connect GitHub repo to it, but you can't connect a code commit repo within yeah, yeah. AWS. They have know. README support. So in code commit, you can't get a README, like a, a, a preview of your README, but in Code Catalyst, you can. There's like a separate place you have to sign up for Code Catalyst. It's like on a separate site. It's a headache to you have to make a builder ID, which is confusing. And then they're trying to tie into like yeah, yeah, people, repos people, that nobody yeah. wants to use. It's hard to understand the identity in AWS now because this is out of your accounts. This is uh this is like I again it's like they're trying to stay relevant and I think it's maybe like the pressure that Azure's putting on them because Azure like this is this is Azure's playbook this is an right. AWS's playbook and so I just wish they like if there was just some things they fixed in their base services um, they'd have really solid things and then and then customers could do their own platform engineering but they're doing they're they're trying to do platform engineering for us and they're failing short of it. Um, you know, building these half-built products, and then they don't get traction, they don't market them, and then they live live forever, and it's frustrating. So yeah. you look at that: CodeStar, App Composer, uh, Code Catalyst, App Runner. Um, it's all these layers that don't work that great. And do you, do you, do you use CodeStar? Uh, I've tried. I like when it first. Came I out, use I, it to connect to GitHub. That, you have it. to, right? And it's weird. That's it's like it. this weird component. But they're that's like, ah, it. doesn't, doesn't do anything platform. else. You know, just that, that's it. Just the connection to a git. So, but um, when you talk to the like the engineers mm -hmm. at AWS, like that work on these teams, they're like, they know about these problems, and they're going to their they're saying like, can we fix these? And they're and they're like, well, we don't have no come out customers complaining, and they got come out customers complaining. And it's like there's someone in the middle. Yeah. There's yeah, someone yeah. in the middle. So there's like an organizational structure that needs to get fixed. But it seems like we're in the we're now in the age of let's keep building crap on top of crap. And I mean, it works for Azure. Like, if, if you ever tried like any Azure stuff, it's like uh, Azure Functions. They have this whole ecosystem in VS Code, and it, in theory, it seems really good. But then when things don't deploy, you're so frustrated. So I almost feel like everyone's going to end up over on GCP at some point here. Well, <laughs> unless they... unless they go uh, belly up because they lose all their ad money. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But the you know the, the the problem with the identity they're trying now to solve that you know they're, they're investing a lot in improving uh, uh, single sign-on uh, with this identity center now and uh, with, there's a there's a lot of things coming you know so uh, uh, that's a really really big investment 
well, when they created this repost, it's also another another service that they created. Uh, instead of previous forums, they went to they went to uh, they went to 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 this new thing called repost. So the way uh, if you want to help someone, you know, if you want to answer some uh, some question, you know, you don't know how to log in, like which account I'm using, you know, it's you don't know what you don't know what's your identity in the in the AWS. Is it a root account in one of your accounts? You don't have like a central account that can be that you can reuse for other things. So uh, nowadays, for this uh, for the for the catalyst thing, they invented this kind of a builder ID, and uh, you know that it it could be a new identity, you know. But they no one knows which is what is the direction. It's at, at least it's not public. So. Uh, but they they are obviously aware of the problem of uh, who am I question you know in, in in all these systems you know otherwise if they don't solve that I will be the one in the GitHub the user from GitHub so that's going to be my identity so yeah yeah uh, Code Whisper uh, to answer the question to, from from Daniel like uh, uh, Code Whisper is uh, exactly like GitHub Copilot okay. Like, that's it that's the answer <laughs> nothing i wouldn't say that like uh, there's anything special you know it's just like uh, you see you have to integrate with aws iam identity center or use aws builder id you know what kind of ids are these what is that I, you know i really I, wish it supported ruby i don't know why i know why people ruby. it's like ruby has so many so much code out there and it'd be like the one of the best ones to to revitalize my my niche programming community but no we don't get it but I understand why. So, next big project. Can I, I vote? Can I vote for the for the for another thing? Go ahead. RDS blue green. All right. Uh, deployments. So, a few seconds for that. Uh, you have you you have one table with like a billion records, and you want to add a column. And uh, you don't. If you, if you if you start that on your production workload, it, it can it can really slow down the system. It can cause you a lot of trouble. So what do you do? You can create another server, and it, that server will be like uh, will will on that server you can initiate the operation. So during the the time that operation goes on, that alter table. The first server will accept calls, accept all the traffic, and do all the changes. And then, in the moment when the next server, when the, when the second server is ready, when the alter table is finished, all the changes. You now, some of the changes will be applied, but those changes which which cannot be applied, they will wait for that for that particular moment. And then maybe you will have a one minute cutoff, and then you will switch to another server. So it's a it's a really good thing, okay. Uh, but you need to try that. You know, you need to test that on on how it works on a, on, on a smaller uh, scale, bigger scale. You need to check like uh, what's going on with your previous backups. You know, which server has a family of backups. Uh, you know, if you if you have a problem, like uh, if if you're gonna go back in time and see the backup from a from a month before, be aware. That once the the blue green transition is done, this old server doesn't exist anymore. So maybe you can have problems, you know. So you need to check everything, you know, to to get these things out. But 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 the idea is is really good. And I would say, that, as Andrew said, that uh, there is a big pressure for companies that like Planet Scale or other uh, similar uh, uh, companies that are now offering relational databases in the cloud, like Yugabyte or someone. So these companies promise you that you will get these kind of uh, 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 changes in database with zero downtime. Okay, so AWS is not uh, 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 running into this uh, sharding stuff like uh, with tests or like uh, uh, for uh, Citus that that is that is used on on, uh, on Microsoft the Cloud. So we don't have options for that. But for almost everything else now we have we are covered, you know. So they're they're trying to catch up, you know, with the 
with uh, with other with other competitors that are now arising you know especially like planet scale that that's that's one to to think about there there is a lot there's like a lot of database services spinning up mm -hmm. and i just wonder it's like do we have a better architecture by choosing one of these providers and then the idea is that our we're more focused on our compute for the csps and then we have these specialized um uh, cloud platforms just for data like there's other ones being like they're not new but you know there's avian i think per, there's percona they do stuff uh, yeah. all sorts of ones so does anyone have any like thoughts on that about like using that as a pivot point because data really is the big well or the big anchor mm -hmm. i think in apps and i feel like maybe you get more flexibility or no or you know the, the, your cloud is there where your data is you know it's you can say that you, you can be multi-cloud, but if your database in is AWS, who it doesn't matter if your processing is maybe in, in in Azure or GCP or something. You know, it's hard to move your data, you know, because data is just growing, and then all these extra extra data and extra files, like you keep data uh, in uh, uh, in S3 or you keep data in uh, Dynamo plus uh, MySQL plus Postgre plus Redshift. You know, they have. A lot of databases. It's not just one table, just one uh, table or, or or table space. So uh, uh, there are there there are there are some slight differences. You know, like if in case of planet scale, your data can still be in AWS. It's not a, like a separate service. Okay, I I think that these options are more acceptable and less risky than those options where your data is somewhere else you know outside of your cloud provider oh sorry i guess i guess the thought is like there's ones where we don't know where they are and there's ones where you yes. deliberately say you know where they are but you still yeah. don't have access to them and then there's ones where you like you're it's actually provisioning it for you in your account yes so there's yeah. those three flavors do, do you do you have a leaning toward anyone that you like in particular at the moment you know like uh, i i i really and it's, 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 this is psychological you we, we need to accept that the uh, we don't control our data completely, you know. But as long as I can do my MySQL dump from that database, I'm fine. Okay. But some of these services are now getting more complicated, you know, like they're just kind of behind some curtains, behind some firewalls. So we won't be able to ac access them directly, you know, because the, there's going to be some uh, sharding system where I don't know how to do MySQL dump you know through through that sharded system it's going to be really complicated you know so if i cannot dump my data back okay that that's 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 the red line for me you know for the moment well and maybe I, it's also like can i replicate my local developer environment i don't mind dynamodb because there's dynamodb local so i can i can do that locally and and i i know that i can replicate it other places can't take it other places but at least from a development perspective that's one checkbox I guess the other thing is like if you cared about migrating somewhere else, but those are two, I guess, two different things. Well, uh, you know, most of these databases are MySQL or Postgre compatible. You know, that's the that's the key. You know, like Postgre compatibility is now a must. That's everyone is doing some kind of a Postgre compatibility. You know, although I'm not a really big fan of Postgre, more more MySQL guy. I think Mind. that uh, that since I mean since we migrated from on-prem to cloud, basically we can't control our data anymore, and uh, basically that data is um, <clears throat> stored um, on the cloud, and that's it, pretty much it. The only thing that may uh, uh, make you think where is your data is some legal uh, regulations where you, your data cannot leave let's say country if you're running the business in certain but it's already covered with a, a regional um boundaries now so basically you your data should not escape your region but i think when we when the data left the, the premises you don't really have control over it it's, it's there <laughs> yeah but you know that that's that feeling i can take that data and run run everything on my local machine if you know i can run everything on my macbook pro m2 max pro giant 96 machine you know like yeah yeah right i i mean yeah. I, I i i was working for one uh uh company that is uh, that was having 
uh, data lake where data was coming at pace of uh, 1.2 in in average 1.2 gigabytes in a in a in a minute maybe even less actually maybe in, even quicker I can't recall it was uh, quite some wow. time ago so that's it <laughs> they cannot really migrate the data anymore that it's there yeah. Yeah, that, so. that's right. So can I can I uh, vote for another like good good product like a really good one? Uh, yeah. So can you can you help me how how do, how this how do you say that this in English? VP VPC lattice. Yeah, you got it, lattice. Oh, lattice. cool. Okay. So uh, if you if you ever experienced uh, doing anything with the VPC in uh, in uh, in AWS. Well, it's not that complicated. If you if it's just one VPC, well, it's pretty much simple. You know, it just this may be hard to understand why you have to pay extra money for your data leaving that network, or I don't know some extra costs you have to understand there. But still, if it's just one VPC, one network, it's it's it it sounds uh, easy. But then, if you have another account and you you want to connect these two accounts. For example, you have a database on one account and uh, your uh, compute is an, on another account. Or maybe you have a, a different client, so a, a, a account per client solution where everyone is connecting to some data which is on a shared account or something. Well, you need to do some kind of a magic then, and then you have to add some kind of access rights, uh, gateways of some of different kind no, no one can understand what 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 are all these names you know in, in the so things are getting more and more complicated if you get if you if you want to connect to another region if you want to expose stuff which are on, an, on, on another in some other on a, in some completely different space well you need to add more and more so uh they came out with a with a product that should be able to connect two services wherever they are this is only about uh, just uh, just a note about http services with the uh, http and the uh, uh, gprc so you can uh, uh, only connect these services but still if you have a service in one account and a, and and sorry client on one account and the service on a completely different in a completely different place you can now create the network called like something service network or something that connects these two places and then you like a, you can create an endpoint in one uh, vpc to connect to, to another one okay so that's pretty much it you know like well you can monitor that you can you can add permissions of of of, of different kind that you couldn't do before you know on on in, in, a, in a aws but this will really simplify exposing external or like remote services in some some light way you know like uh, uh, much much it will be much easier than it was before mm. okay yeah so that's a that's a great thing that's yeah. a, like a this is like a one of those foundational services i would say so yeah. maybe one day we will just forget about uh, a vpc yeah. So I guess the question would be like, you know, Elastic Cache is always a pain because you have to have it living in the same VPC as. Yeah, your unfortunately, VPC. this this won't work for it. This is only for HTTPC and the. Well, okay, you know, there's always someone complaining. You know, like they will they put a lot of effort, build a great product. I think it, then, well, it's fine. Then there's, I think it's, there's it's not a complaining. You know, so. it's not. I wouldn't say it's a problem with this. It's more a problem of like I wish they had a, an actual serverless. Like they have memory DB. But an actually serverless cache. So like now I'm really into one called Memento. Yeah, exactly. It's made by all the DynamoDB uh, formerly. Like it is like it is serverless. It works like instantly. And I just wish like AWS had something like that. But maybe they'll reacquire their DynamoDB team and roll it into AWS. That'd be nice. Yeah, we, we need something like a HTTP endpoint on Redis that would do the do the, do the stuff you know that's that's it nothing nothing really special we do that we we need we had something like that on uh, aurora serverless v1 like that's called data api so you could connect through a data service but the you know the speed of the uh, of, of that uh, endpoint of that interface was not that good and then if you compare that to binary interfaces well 
we'll see if uh, if if adding http3 into the game will help because it's it's based on a completely different uh, 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 different protocols like udp and it's going to maybe it will improve the the latency and then we will uh, just replace all the interfaces we have with http so maybe that will help i have a dumb question here it like so like when we're talking about microservices or service to service oh. communication, I my brain always goes, I need a service map. Is this something where it will, yeah. it, this is like a, like a, a, like a side cardless uh, yeah. um, service map, but there's maybe some limitations, but it's it's worth it. Like, yeah, yeah. is that that's kind it. of a way to describe it or? That, that's pretty much it. You know, you will have, you will be able to uh, create a name, a code for something, and then you will register that code and then you will access that by that code you know but that's we, we we have abis cloud map which get, helps you have identities where it's like okay i have an rds instance or something and yeah, i'm gonna now it's gonna great. be called db at but it's more know. about dns you know cloud map is more okay. about dns you know this is uh this is really about mapping the service somewhere else you know like uh, on on uh, on 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 a uh, layer seven yeah. You know, it's yeah. com it's a complete. It's that's why it's over HTTP. You know, like that's a firewall with a v VPN or whatever that is, just driving data from one location to another. I'm, I'm understanding that as an obstruction to the, the the VPC. You don't need to understand any more VPC, how it works, how how you're configuring VPC, but kind of an obstruction on on top of the VPC that can kind of uh, uh, removes that hassle around setting up the VPC. So no more CIDR blocks? We don't have to do any CIDR math? Yeah. But, well, yeah, well, look, look, look. This this won't replace, uh, uh, if you want to connect from uh, from Lambda to a service which is inside your VPC, this will not remove, uh, this will still not remove that part. You know, you still need to get into some VPC and that from that VPC to connect to so somewhere else. But I, I assume in the future, you should be able to connect from your Lambda to any kind of HTTP service without getting into VPC. OK. I think I get it. It's um, just it just everything has to be powered by it, like, like HTTP protocol yeah, for communication. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's still in the preview. So uh, I mean, this is still something that uh, that needs to be uh, concerned before thinking of uh, uh, Lattice. And I guess the other part is that if we get cold starts for majority languages, then it's like, who needs Fargate if you have the service to service communication? Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a mistake because there's some things there. But I'm just trying to think. I keep thinking, like, in my serverless workload, I'm like, there's things I just need Fargate for. And I just trying to think of, like, where is the interoperability? Like, how does the interoperability work with this and, and those other layers? Or what would be their future replacement? I think Fargate is uh, still valid for uh, uh, services which uh, which you're expecting to to last longer, and uh, I think that uh, if you have some some uh, uh, computational uh, unit that uh, that you're sure that it's gonna work, let's say 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I think still Fargate is is valid for that case. For that yeah, case. And, it, and it's still cheaper than if you have a lot of yes. traffic. It's much cheaper yes. than than running Lambda. Yes, absolutely, and. Uh, and uh, uh, that unit is is still um, uh, that scenarios is uh, are are still valid in so many cases uh, um, uh, where uh, you have some uh, ETL jobs, especially uh, if somebody was uh, uh, having on-prem ETL transformation and you want to uh, move them now to cloud. It's still easier to move them to to uh, let's say Fargate than to basically uh, convert that into lambdas um, at this moment and if you if you uh, uh, um, cannot solve uh, that uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, waiting time in the in the um, uh, uh, those containers in some way uh, uh, to replace that those waiting times in transformations um, um, over uh, some orchestrational tool like uh, uh, step functions, then again, this is this is uh, 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 still way forward. You know, with but the still, you know, like many companies that have the existing applications, they will first move to uh, EC2, then ECS, then Firegate. You know, like uh, uh, it's not easy to get all these applications to serverless without like change without changes in code. So right. uh, things like this snap start. Would really help to do, to get there, you know. But uh, uh, we have, we still have these 
let's call them legacy applications written like 10 years 15 years ago you know? yeah. so we need to yeah. move them somewhere so one one more product like uh, uh i want to uh, to to say some good things about you know like it's called wicker okay guys you didn't hear about that i don't even know what what does it do uh, it's called uh, it is wicker wicker yeah so uh, okay just guess what it is but don't read please don't search don't search for that just say what what, what do you think it is wicker yeah i know so i'm not gonna it, like okay. I, I just keep thinking of wicker chairs to be honest i can't <laughs> the name doesn't help wicker yeah. Well, yeah, that says, no, that's, that says a lot about that says a lot about the marketing of uh, AWS marketing team. You know, like, what is Wicker. this about? And there's no e in it either. So look, I, I'll help you a bit. You know, this is this strange name must have something with uh, to do with the encryption. You know, just just kind of a crypt, crypto crypto name. You know, like Vicker. <laughs> okay, so this is the service that will allow you to uh, easily make uh, enterprise end-to-end -end encryption message communication. Mm. So that's a kind of a, that, that's really a interesting, an interesting component, you know, that you can use. And uh, uh, it's obvious that AWS is, is investing a lot in, uh, in their Connect, Wicker, and, uh, and other services which are for corporate enterprise messaging, you know, like, uh, so uh and then you can re you can reuse you know these services for 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 your for your enterprise needs you know so but uh we'll see we'll see how i guess it works. i guess the question is like what was there before that was like that didn't work was it like just proprietary tools is was there no solution like why would i be like this is super exciting well would you use uh microsoft teams for everything in your company I do not saying I like to. I do, you do. You do. You do, I do. But, you know, like you, you, we are talking about really big businesses, like with 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 more than thousand euros per dollars per month. You know, like really, really, not not like your small company. But but Wicker is just the encryption protocol, or is it like an actually? It's like Chime with a bunch of stuff in it. It's not Microsoft Teams, right? It's just an encryption protocol. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a couple of services that help you to get everything ready. You know, like uh, it's okay. not the it's not the client application. You know, like. Uh, but but it enables platform engineering, so you yes, don't have yes. to go with Teams, and if you have the capacity to do it, I have. I want to know. This is like AWS reinvent adjacent. But it's serverless related that I really want to know about. I see like someone's asking about data zone. So I, I'm sorry, Daniel, but I want to ask this first, which is what do you think about all these emerging infrastructure from code frameworks? I'm talking about Wing, I'm talking about Amped. There's another one, I forget its name. Um, and I feel bad because they look like they're the most developed, but we just kind of forget about them. These are serverless uh, frameworks. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Uh, you know Jeremy are? Daly's, yeah, J Jeremy Daly's like uh, uh, Amped and stuff uh look I, I i'm coming from java world you know like we had these things where you would you were able to define infrastructure inside your application code you know like you could add a queue you could add a, a abstraction of a database and stuff inside your java code mm -hmm. so you don't really care how is it implemented you know who, which the server will do that you know so this is not something really uh, new you know and uh, they're now trying to abstract that for people uh, who are coming to serverless because serverless is now getting more and more complicated. You know, it's just, just not easy to, to create a queue. You know? So I guess the question is like, in the Java world, did that work out? And, is, and it's still like, it's like, it works? Or was, was it was it like, oh, well, it seemed like a good idea, yeah. but now nobody's using it? It, it was there because uh, we had our local networks, you know, now we have, uh, have to move to the cloud and then we need to create new abstractions in the cloud that's what they're doing they're making abstractions of a queue and saying oh, okay these are the these are the best defaults for you you know oh, sorry you. so so these abstractions are already for cloud in java i didn't know no, no, i didn't know no, 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 i'm saying AMP, what is. amp is doing what amp oh, is okay, doing okay. you know like so okay. uh, uh, and uh, but then if you look at what uh, what cdk is doing you can create your infrastructure in Java or or TypeScript or who, whatever language, you know, and then you can set up your own defaults. Like you want to define your queue. 
Now, how do you feel if, and I don't, and I might be misinterpreting this, but when mm -hmm. I was talking to Wing, mm -hmm. uh, like the idea was they wouldn't, de they wouldn't be using S3 buckets necessarily. They, they might like deploy object storage and that's what you'd be using. Like, would you be comfortable with some kind of thing that's proprietary, but can be deployed to any cloud? So you're just utilizing base compute? But what's what's the what uh, we need to see the benefit, you know, like uh, that's okay. what I'm trying to figure out. Because I it's think... like just because it's simple, you know, just just because it looks simple, it doesn't mean that's that's good for you. Because uh, if you really want to get the best of your platform, you would use these features that come exactly. from AWS or or Microsoft or someone. You know, with all these abstractions, you don't get all the all the best features of all these clouds. Just get like the some common denominator common, you know, yeah exactly uh, that's right. that's the problem you know, so. so but i guess the question is are these features worth it or are we going towards the direction of like you look at like open telemetry right everyone was making their own and maybe that's a bad example and you can tell me why but like everyone's like oh we're making our own uh specification for this and now we're all now moving over to open telemetry and and it's becoming normalized and life's becoming easier yeah but that's um, that's uh that's uh that's just a format you know okay yeah, not, so uh, I mean, everybody moved to JSON, right? Uh, so, you know, it's uh, it's 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 not the, the, when you when you're building, let's say, uh, S3 bucket and you're optimizing S3 bucket for the needs of your customers, you may uh, uh, do it completely differently than some other uh, cloud provider. So now, if you're making some common denominator for all of them, what Koran says, you're gonna not really get the real benefits of the cloud that you are in no. and think about how how many uh, uh companies really are switching uh, uh from one uh, cloud provider to to uh some other cloud pro provider you know quickly or basically based on some in uh let's say cost or something i think they rarely do that uh, and i think that uh uh, if you're building, if you're building something on certain cloud provider, I think you should utilize the benefits uh, what they are offering instead of. Uh, um, it's it's a, it's it's in in some way it is similar to Kubernetes, you know, you know uh, you get you get these abstractions, you know, and then, but I just I just want a cheap Heroku that uh, I just want a cheap Heroku. That's all I want. Uh, yeah. uh, Daniel, do you want to talk about Amazon Data Zone because we kind of. Yeah, uh, yeah, awesome. yeah. Cost over that? No, no. I was asking you. I wasn't yeah, at the yeah, yeah. end. So there so, is a uh, there, there is a lot of uh, products coming from uh, AWS these days about uh, that are here to uh, to help people share data. You know, like uh, for example, if if I am if I have to uh, communicate with external companies, you know, and 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 exchange data with them. Uh, then uh, uh, I need some space. I need some de well-defined space, which is outside of my account, to share this data. You know, so I give you maybe I give you a token, and then they can, you can upload the file and stuff like that. You know, so you can communicate with many many companies, with many people, and they will still be able to upload data in a way that is uh, 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 that doesn't need some extra software developer to to do the, some special work you know you, I, I just send you a link and then you upload the file and then everything the process starts so they are kind of a, a tr they are trying to improve all uh, this whole access you know to 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 the to the cloud uh you know to to upload data exchange data but they're making real mess you know about these names because no one knows what is this all about you know like clean rooms Holy crap! You know, like I, I don't get it. You know, like, maybe I don't speak English that that well. You know, but I don't know, Andrew. What? I mean, clean rooms make sense to me, but I I never really it didn't click to me what it did because like yeah, today, exactly. like the other day, I was looking. I was trying to say, um, for my boot camp, I was saying, okay, what's the solution for uh, anomalizing data, masking data, protecting data, like with databases? And I saw this, and I was like, is this the thing that does it? And I don't think it is. Like maybe it's a like it's just like a safe bucket like what is it yeah, i don't know what it is safe bucket safe bucket yeah is that what it is cuz like that's yeah. useful to me maybe well, it's for not, it's this might be fair. useful in uh well for health this might be useful because at least you know if it's in there it's safe but like from from more broader sense i don't i don't get it so okay uh let me bring one another uh feature that i i i personally like a lot and I mean, just a second just for for about the data zone that daniel asked oh, right, okay. okay so that's just a space where uh, you can internally share data inside the company, okay? So uh, 
what uh, clean rooms is for the outside world data zone is for the inside world okay so we can uh, uh, categorize data uh, uh, give access to people inside the company like to, to this but it's also like a space it's also like an external portal you see the, see the problem we, you have you have a company which has like a, a, a software developers who have access to uh, AWS accounts but you have a lot of data a lot of people who produce data who have to deal with data and they will use data zone okay and then if you have to share this externally then you will use these clean rooms and and then extend that that same world you know so but it's pretty much you know like the just the safe place to share data and with data zone to categorize data okay not a data lake the data lake in data lake you would prepare data cool you know? like a data catalog yeah i really that... wanted to go i apologize to everybody yes. we have 13 minutes left jen and uh, are we on time to cover all the announcements we covered last time before Marin basically basically we covered uh, even more things than we did on our uh, meetup yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. was more vocal tonight thank you Goran. And... <laughs> thank you uh, Manin wanted something to say, yeah. and after yeah. Manin, we can go to the closing notes, Ruffle, and mm -hmm. whatever you have remaining. Daniel, these, also... are the main, these are the main yeah. things, you know. Like... But on your meetup, I also heard about something for insurance or something. No, no, supply chain. Or what was that? Or yeah, we some mentioned high level that services. Quickly. Yeah, we mentioned that quickly, but we didn't uh, uh, give too much uh, 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 attention to that because it's, it's still in preview and. It, it's kind of a business application that we are not really into much. So, yeah, we just said that it exists. Yeah, we'll see. It's it's a risky yeah. thing. We'll see. Uh, this is this is one of these products where AWS professional team they created a product for someone. I mean, I'm just guessing. Okay, they they created the product for someone. And then they said, "Okay, let's let's make a product uh, of this." You know, like maybe they created that for Amazon and say, and now they're trying to expand that. But we'll see if if the competition will use that or for <laughs> because this is Amazon's product. You know, so it's strange. Marin Winter, I interrupted you. Yes, uh, and, and no worries, no worries. Uh, so uh, I think one of the, the 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 interesting products that came out was. Uh, uh, AWS cross account observability. Uh, previously, if you want to have, let's say, a common um, uh, observability uh, through a few accounts, um, as you now pretty much um, um, any uh, bigger company is having a multi account uh, organizational uh, units. So they have, let's say, like, um, I don't know, eShop, they have a uh, um, something else uh, as a business unit so they have a uh, several uh businesses that are combined in a way uh but are separate business units uh into the um, um separate organizational units into the this account structure and um <clears throat> basically uh, uh it was very hard to integrate uh, all those logs uh, into the let's say common observability and when you have a uh, let's say a team that is monitoring all these uh, applications uh, they have to have some other tool that is uh, uh, not really a cloud watch uh, that you can uh, utilize in order to do that now with this uh, uh, feature you are basically enabled to uh, have a central uh, logging onto um, multiple uh, from multiple accounts and you can basically track your logs track your uh, um, um, uh, 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 trails for 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 x trail um, x-ray and uh, uh, you can also use an insight so that basically you can use everything uh, that you could earlier use on the one account you can now use on multiple accounts in cloudwatch good one yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, uh, basically, I, I, I kind of developed one product that was uh, meant just for one account. Uh, and then when a uh, client had a multiple accounts, I, there was no, no purpose for this product anymore. So uh, we had to come up with something else in order to uh, have the centralized monitoring system.
I think that we are almost out of the time. So then you'll have some uh, raffle for the yeah, attendees. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, no, so, so sorry we are rushing you. It's a, a lunch break for most of the people in North America. Uh, are there any questions that were not answered in the forum that you want attendees to answer right now? You can speak up now. And uh, and you may be wondering why I was so quiet, which is not easy for me. This meetup is a, a rerun in English of the similar meetup that happened on Balkans with the user groups of Bosnia, uh, two user groups from Bosnia, uh, one from Montenegro and one from Serbia, uh, Belgrade. And and uh, one of the attendees uh, couldn't, like one of the panelists, Alexander, uh, who wrote this book, couldn't make it. So his spot is taken by uh, Andrew Brown, CEO of Exampro, and the hero. I'm repeating this intro because unfortunately I forgot to turn on the recording uh, in the first 15 minutes. So while you are doing the survey, I will post the link. Uh, I will uh, I will put the slide for the panelists to introduce themselves once again for those who will be watching you on YouTube. And uh, I have hard stop at 2 p.m. So if you have more questions, we can stay we can stay longer. So start with the cash questions and no no questions. Anybody? Okay, so let me share the screen then. Uh, share the screen again so you can your entire screen. Oh, Eva raised hand. Hi, yeah. hey everyone. Uh, sorry, so I'm currently working for Deloitte Canada um, on AWS. I've uh, done my certifications and um, like uh, working on several different uh, AWS services for different projects across different clients. And I found this discussion very, very interesting and in awe of all the AWS community heroes on this call. So I was just wondering if you would be open to presenting something similar at Deloitte, my company, for all the AWS practitioners, because I find that this conversation was really very, very helpful and insightful. And it will definitely help uh, us uh, at Deloitte as well. So just wanted to check if this panel is open for a discussion. Uh, Andrew is our boss. Uh, the guy Andrew Brown is our boss, and he will communicate <laughs> further all about the, all the all details. You know, so okay. I'm, I'm doing a boot so camp. Andrew, I'm doing a boot maybe camp I right can now. add you on LinkedIn <laughs> and send you a message. Uh, on yeah. other details, okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, Any thank other you. questions? So, Eva, what what was what was the thing that you liked? Uh, I just like the way uh, you present a service and then talk about the good aspects and what's not right with it. And a couple of things which I wasn't familiar with because I've been working on AWS for five years now on, like I said, different uh, services, like as a data analyst, the migration engineer, and sometimes as a solution architect as well. So I found this conversation very interesting where you brought out very important points, like especially with services in the previous section, um, how to sort of go about that, whether we can use it, is it a fully capable solution, just as an example. But that's one of the few things that caught my attention and found this entire discussion very, very interesting. Thank you so much. I, I, I thought you. it was a little bit pessimistic. Normally, they're much happier meetups. So it was almost, but it's different thing. Like last time I was participant, now I'm kind of co-host. So it's different set of eyes. Oh, no, it's, you see, the same story, you know, like we always complain about AWS, but we are happy users of AWS. It's like kids. That, we, we complain about yeah, kids, yeah. but don't let anybody else complain about them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, this is something that you really love because they're making such a good product at the end, you know. So it's okay to complain a bit, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you keep asking questions. Yeah. So I, I flash the uh, names of the panelists if you want to kind of tell them about your businesses because you're educators, but you also kind of have to pay their mortgages. And I know some of you have good good service offerings. So maybe this is your opportunity to go again, Jan. And, and your sister dropped off, unfortunately, her uh, internet uh, didn't work. So maybe quick intro, and then I'll do in the next four minutes like a raffle. I have the names. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, go through the introduction of the speakers once again, since uh, we forgot to turn on recording in the beginning. Uh, I will start first. Janan Jamlan, AWS Community Hero from Bosnia, running AWS user groups here, together with my sister Janana. She had to drop off earlier. Uh, I will now... Uh, Marie, would you like to go next? 
Uh, sure, thanks, Jenan. Um, I'm Mari Rajinovic. I'm uh, based in Montenegro. I'm uh, AWS uh, <clears throat> community builder for serverless. Uh, also, I'm uh, AWS user group leader for Montenegro. Mm, um, currently, I'm working uh, at Crayon at Cloud Center of Excellence. Uh, also, I'm um, um, well architect at uh, co leading the uh, <laughs> co-leading the the well-architected uh, uh, team and um, also i'm uh, uh, writing uh, an article so on medium so you can be, you can follow me there also you can follow me on twitter uh, i'll write the the uh, below the both uh, uh, addresses and that's pretty much it I'm Goran. I'm a boss of Andrew, and uh, I, I always I, I tell Andrew what to do. You know, so it's everything he did. Uh, it's, it's it was my idea, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm pushing all so many things, and uh, I'm I'm so disappointed that we just managed to get only ten thousand people for his boot camp. So I mean, Andrew, please just next time, like make it like thirty thousand, okay? I'm I'm working as hard as I can. I mean. <laughs> It's not enough. But, this is like but Jenna, you're also going. Jenna is also doing the uh, training. Some I don't know how we call it boot camp or something with the University of Bosnia. That's a major thing. And Andrew, I think that builds on the idea you and I had before to have uh, universities teach uh, a cloud like it North Bay and then in Sarajevo. Jenna, can you share like what you're doing with your boot camps? Well, it's on much lower scale than uh, than what yeah. Andrew is doing, but and it's also on our local languages since here in Balkan region, a lot of people. I mean, we all can perfectly well understood each other. So to bring AWS and uh, DevOps culture and cloud technologies closer to the students and unemployed people or the people from the IT. Who are willing to who are willing to transform their career from the development to the DevOps or site ability engineering? We started the DevOps mentorship program, uh, and we are running it for 200 people. We, 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 I mean, I'm a little bit ashamed to mention the numbers in front of the Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Jenna's Jenna's Jenna was really like uh, 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 he made a really great effort to uh, uh, to get a lot uh, a lot of people into cloud practitioner uh, uh, and, and and these courses on, on uh, these courses on, on on AWS. That's really very important. You know, people uh, uh, talk about really big things, uh, cloud projects, million user stuff, but uh, then. You have a problem with with young people that need to just the need to start. They need that first thing, you know. And uh, with AWS, the, even cloud practitioner sounds so complicated, you know. So uh, so Jenna was running a, a long uh, uh, line of uh, uh, trainings for cloud practitioner, uh, uh, and and then later for uh, uh, for associate level, if I remember correctly. So that that's really big effort, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Andrew didn't introduce himself uh, for those who don't know or not from our group. Hey, everybody. It's Andrew Brown. I am the AWS hero from Canada. I live up in the north of Canada, no longer in Toronto. But uh, I have my own company where I create cloud certifications across the board. I'm an AWS hero, GCP champion. And for some reason, I just can't seem to get Azure MVP, but I will one day <laughs> if I keep bugging them. Um, I'm running a free cloud bootcamp, as you heard. And you know, my opinion is is that um, you know there's different types of teaching, and so like teaching at scale is different uh, from teaching with a group. And so there's great value in smaller groups that you won't get in my thing. And my thing is more about reach as opposed to like it's accessible. But if you can join a smaller group, you're always better off doing so. We all introduce ourselves, uh, Daniel. Once again, thank you for having us. Uh, it was a really a pleasure yeah. to speak I, in front of the uh, your user group. But so, did you introduce your so sister? Much. Her internet dropped, uh, so she's also oh, yeah. AWS. So Janana, my sister, she is an AWS community builder, and basically she is helping me and running most of uh, the AWS community efforts in Bosnia 
she helped to bring AWS to our universities. From the February this year, she will start a separate class dedicated to AWS and DevOps on AWS at one of our universities in Sarajevo, which was one of our biggest goals as a community to bring AWS closer to the students, to include and involve cloud and modern IT technologies into the faculty curriculums because our faculty curriculums doesn't really follow what is currently the edge of the technologies. So, yes, that's a little bit awesome. about Janana. Awesome. Uh, I shared uh, contact details for all of us, our LinkedIn profiles, so feel free to connect and Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Janana is the AWS community builder and, well, basically, I would not say she's helping. I would say she's running most of the efforts. Mm -hmm. I'm and, and coming that, behind her back. <laughs> and, and Jonathan, like, did we forget to mention anything here? Yeah, like, you didn't go to Rainman. I didn't. That's why we have a guest who attended it. Oh, yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't say anything about reInvent, yeah. <laughs> Only about services. <laughs> <laughs> that's true how was the chaos <laughs> it, it was like a uh, last year it was like three three times less people like uh, or four, even four so it was really like a nice environment like uh, everyone was wearing a mask and then it was clean super and it was super easy to move around this year oh my god like nightmare <laughs> <laughs> and everybody got sick that's what i learned on your meetup and andrew was sick when he came here yeah, yeah, it was really, really heavy. Yeah, yeah, everybody around me got sick. Happily, I didn't somehow. Maybe I did, but I don't know. You are. You... Yeah, yeah, I, was, uh, you're 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 are, I, I really don't know if it, it's my fault because when I came, I was telling everyone I had allergies, but I think I was actually sick. And so oh. I might have. Uh, now the whole China is, uh, has an epidemic. Of... <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah. to> Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, okay. So, so in the closing notes, like for those who yeah. are not with us uh, here, we have Manning publications. I go to manning.com website. They give uh, every meetup uh, a, a free product. And I have to thank uh, Slobodan, your friends from Balkans, who introduced me to Manning because uh, uh, they wrote the book for them. So since then, every meetup, we, we have the product. So I will do the wheel. Is there anybody whose name I didn't put, you can say it, or I can just spin. OK, spin. Uh, so where is it? Where's the spin button? That's funny. It's a middle button. Yeah. It's the, the, the white one in the middle. Ta-da, Amaha. All right. Perfect. One of our old timers since the first meetup. So congrats, Amaha. Uh, you will let me know before the next meetup what happens. And for those who did not know about this group, like we've been five years in the business, first two years we go offline. Uh, so next month, it's a five five years uh, since the group started. It is going to be a virtual meetup, uh, meetup still, still afraid of COVID. Uh, and we're going to have like Made in Canada contents, four short presentations. One topic will be on Amazon. I don't know if Jonathan is interested to, uh, to, to present or we'll find some uh, another presenter. Second topic will be uh, GCP based. We have a uh, uh, Google uh, uh, who is going to talk about CI CD pipelines there. Third topic will be the snow on Snowflake. Uh, 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 I think it's going to be Ian, the presenter, who closed our offline meetups at My Planet in February 2020. He's now a, a Snowflake consultant. And the fourth topic will be by Trinimbus, because this group wouldn't exist without uh, uh, tri Trinimbus. They now have a new name, Infostrux. They moved from AWS consulting services into uh, data engineering space. And, and I personally believe that over the five years, like with serverless, not too many companies have adopted it. But the compute problem has been solved. So you have like uh, compute, data, networking, then uh, governance and security on top of everything. Uh, so more mess is, is remaining in data. So so uh, we kind of want to point you where the next uh, uh, shift and work and focus of our group will be in the next five years, I hope so. So I hope you join us. Uh, and I will share more announcements at that uh, for that virtual meetup as well. So thank you again for coming. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy you said yes. Thank you. And, Keep spreading the knowledge and helping the world with your servant hearts. Yes, thank you to all our guests. That was excellent. Bye. Andrew, thank back you. to work. Andrew. Yes. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So tired. Bye.